Mob Entertainment just released the brand new second trailer for Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 and today I'm going to be breaking it down frame by frame showing you things you might have missed and also exploring some of the lore related items in the trailer. Hello everyone and welcome my name's It's Just George and of course I make content around Poppy Playtime and Little Nightmares and other games so if you like theories, explain videos and all the usual stuff make sure you hit like and subscribe as I'm going to be covering a lot of poppy playtime chapter 3 in the future but there's also something else i'm going to be talking about in the future related to poppy playtime and no it's not the movie but i can't save it right now anyway enough with the introductions everyone's here for the breakdown so let's get right into it and of course spoiler alert for of course poppy playtime chapter 1 2 args and of course the recent trailer so so straight away in the trailer we are being introduced to chapter three through slides on a projector these images look like they are being projected onto a wall within the factory perhaps it could be our first in-game introduction to the chapter three levels and it's worth mentioning that it does look like a human hand cycling through these images whether that's the player or if it's just a, an effect for the trailer we don't know yet in the first slide, we see a few employees in hazmat suits watching over children sleeping in their beds, or what I assume to be sleeping. In the slide, we can see a few of the children's faces are scribbled out. But oddly enough, one of the children's face isn't, and you can actually see some of the details within them, and they are, of course, one of the closest to the frame of the camera. And it looks like they are tinted with purple. What I think is going on here is that these images is showing us that Playtime Co. are monitoring the children while they are asleep due to the usage of the gas and of course research research. Perhaps they are checking for any reactions or changes in children as they sleep. It's also worth mentioning that the room itself looks to be a study sleep room. And I mentioned that because of the desk at the back. It looks like they're there to monitor children, not the typical bunk bed you see all in play care. It makes me wonder from a storytelling point of view that if someone has gone back to these slides and scribbled out the name of the children, they have all died or be affected by the gas in some manner. The next slide shows four children standing in the line with their faces scribbled out, again holding to the whole if they're scribbled out they probably died scenario. Interestingly, I wonder if this is a hint to some of the identities of the mascots that we've been seeing, as I think the one that could be hinted to be the one of Huggy is the children in the Huggy Wuggy t-shirt or sweater or whatever you want to call it. Or the other conclusion is that the image is just referencing a photo for Playtime Co. showing in which children were used for the experiment. So it's more of an internal thing, if you will. The next slide tells us more about Experiment 1188 and the Bigger Bodies Initiative. If you've been following the ARG for some time lately, you'd know that this is referring to Catnap and Theodore Grambau. From this, we can confidently say that we're going to be seeing Catnap within Home Sweet Home. The other interesting aspect about this is the talk of a few more experiments, 1187 and 1186. Now in the document it doesn't really tell us directly who these experiments are, but we can be assured that we will see them in the trailer at some point. Also something really interesting is the explanation of the mixture they used for 1188 and how they treated him. Unfortunately most of the document has been censored. After this the projector switches off and we can see the room is darkened and a figure in the background appears to be lurking. Now by the end of the trailer we'll know who this is but of course this is Catnap. Whether this actually has some truth to how the chapter plays out, I don't know. I think this is more for the tense build-up for the trailer this is actually happening. Or, if not, it could make an excellent jump scare in the game. We get a very wide shot of Playcare when we can see all the specific departments within Playcare. The voiceover, which seems to be that from Elliot Ludwig or at stretch maybe Dr. Sawyer, introduces Playcare and we get shown the first shots of the school. Inside the school we get to see some sort of downtime area where the children can watch videos and relax and draw and things like, you know, children do. We can see a few characters returning on the war memorial, Huggy, Mommy, Boxy and Dog Day. And in the corner we see two of the smiling critters, Catnap and Crafty Corn. After this we get to see the first signs of Playhouse, which interestingly has a few worrying sights such as the blood on the floor, which it also has claw marks too, <laughs> if that weren't enough. 
And on the wall, we see handprints. And also on the wall, we see some writing written in which looks to be blood, saying joy and the hour of joy. Also, shout out to the rubber ducky. The true horror of mascot. <laughs> The next area looks to be some type of main hall. I'm guessing this is Home Sweet Home, or something similar, with images all over the walls of characters and children. I do wonder if this is a hint that we will get to see Boxy Boo too somewhere inside, because as you can see, we can see the cube or the box that Boxy's Boo design was based off lying on the floor. Lying in wait, perhaps. It makes me wonder if this hall is there to highlight the successes of the experiments. So, for instance, these children came on to become this mascot. The next place that we're shown is one that is actually quite familiar with us at the moment, and it's currently the sleeping area for the children with the broken floor. Interestingly enough, there seems to be some type of dust or particle effect emitting from the floor upwards. My only theory with that could be that it is possible that there is some type of bleed, some gas bleed for the facility. Mind you, it might well be run down and pipes are broken, so perhaps the normal gas is leaking through, but I think it might just be a little bit more sinister than that and of course we know it's not sleeping gas because it isn't red it looks actually just quite dark interestingly we get a complete change up in the presentation and we get to see the first look at some type of vhs tape found footage video now i don't think this footage will be linked with the vhs tape of the chapter because i doubt mod would play that hand that early but in the found footage we can see someone running around in play area. Something interesting about this is that the height of the person that we're seeing run around is too big. Too big to be that of a child, almost the size of an adult. So what could they be doing in this area at this time? Then of course we get the shot of the damaged train and as it's broken and on fire and yeah, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So I'll be surprised if that's up and running again. <laughs> In the next clip, we get to see the player maneuvering around Bobby Bear Hug. Bobby looks to be following the player. Perhaps this Bobby can't move when being watched. Similar to a lot of horror mechanics, if you will. I think it originates from Doctor Who. But that does lead me to believe to one thing, that all the smiling critters have a specific type of behavior. And I hope this gets proved as we go further in the video. After this, we see that the player picks up an additional hand, which is a flare gun. We get to see the flare gun in action in the next scene, where the hand fires a flare in the darkness, revealing that Catnap is watching us in the dark, stalking us in the darkness like prey. After this, we get to see the whole map of Playcare, showing us the layout of each building. The trailer provides us with enough information to actually explain every part of the area. So let's start with the toy store. Every child should have a toy, and every child of Playcare can find one here. Home sweet home, a place for rest and relaxation after a long day of learning and play. Playhouse, made for play and imagination, the place for fun in Playcare. School, the place where all children of Playcare come to learn and grow. Now, unfortunately, for the counsellor's office, I couldn't actually get a good shot of the text, so I'm going to have to give that one a miss. Although I imagine it won't be as exciting as any of the other ones. <laughs> After this, we get to see more use of the green hand logic and blueprint with the effect of the electric puzzle and a visual hint to what we're going to have to combine those features. We also get to see the purple hand in action pushing us away from the floor. We did on this channel predict that was going to be in chapter 3 after some of that tag footage came out about Project Playtime. And I'm very glad that we did cover that because as you can see, it's now paid off. We then get to see the rest of the found footage from the star where we can see a large creature patrolling the area and of course it's catnap which is alarming <laughs> after that we see a brand new way to use their hands it looks like a type of hand turret or hand cannon or <laughs> where we can use it to power certain switches we also get a cool shot of the player throwing a fuse or something similar into a power unit 
It looks like the puzzles are going to be very creative this time round and really utilize the hands and their different abilities and features. And I am all for that. I think Poppy Playtime could go various ways with the amount of hand mechanics they have. Like currently, even with Chapter 3's announcement, they could do so many interesting puzzles. And this just adds fuel to that fire. And I am all for it. We get to see the player using the flare handgun again, lighting the way forward to reveal what looks to be like some sort of campfire. Now, I'm going to have to double take that one, but <laughs> it looks to be like some sort of campfire. <laughs> After this, we get to see inside the counselor's office and have a peek at who runs the areas, all while using our new gas mask. We could also see a new Daisy poster and a few doors that have names on them and their respective departments. The first one that comes to view is Nate Carpenter, the head of gas production. We also see the head of the playhouse, Greg Vito. Uh, please forgive me, I have no idea how these names are pronounced. And the one tricky one that was quite hard to make out, head of home sweet home is, I think, Lisa Bowton. Again, name pronunciation probably isn't 10 out of 10, but I really weren't expecting it. Lisa's last name is debatable, as I've tried making the image as clear as I can, but from the tear and the blur, it's really hard to get an actual read about it. After this, we get to see Barry with an upgrade to Formula One being used as a door opener. But after this, we are shown the Hour of Joy VHS resting on some type of table with blood splattered on the floor. And then we get another shot of Catnap running after the person videoing the found footage. Which is really scary, because one of the things I've noticed about this VHS, or this found footage thing, is Catnap is just so large. It makes me wonder if the people that were being chased by Catnap could actually find refuge in the children's play area, because Catnap couldn't get in there. So it might be interesting to see in the full game. Then we come to my favourite part of the trailer. I was gobsmacked when I saw this character. I, I could not, I really wanted to talk about this from the moment I knew about the trailer. And wow, I think I do have my new favourite character in Poppy Playtime. But this character was lurking in the darkness, moving only in the dark. Which again, I believe is another Doctor Who enemy trait that Amber actually hinted towards in the Discord. This looks to be taking place in the school, but what is this toy and i don't even think it is a toy i think this person or toy is in fact one we've already seen through the children with the drawing the one that looks similar to a moth with some antenna coming from her head or antennae she looks to be quite feminine uh, with long wavy hair and a this is actually quite something big because i actually theorize that this creature might be the first time that they've managed to be able successfully to merge an animal and a toy and i think this is because we're looking at the moth creature the one that was drawn in one of the reports from the children and the one that the counselor saw i think this creature is going to have a very big role to play within the school but if you really want to whack on your tinfoil hat my exaggerated theory that perhaps this could be molly ludwig just remember you heard it here first because i haven't got time to go into a video for it but i have a strong feeling that could be molly ludwig after this, we see some more push purple hand in action, which then cuts to the player looking up and revealing a rather large underground catwalk and some structure that is similar to the one that we see in Project Playtime's Destroy a Toy. After this, we see the flare gun again, which is fighting off, which looks to be Bobby Bearhug again. And it looks like Bobby is following you in the darkness, waiting for you to drop your guard. And again, this is what we saw in the ARG. It was footage of Bobby patrolling the area. After this, we get to see Kitty and Poppy. It looks like they've been looking after you or have saved you from some type of critter, perhaps. Poppy looks like she's holding on to a flashlight. And from the stance, it does look like they are trying to help you. One thing I did notice about this is how bloodshot Poppy's eyes have become. Now, can a doll cry? Don't know. Find out, Chapter 3. <laughs> but it does seem to be overly bloodshot. Now, I swear this wasn't the case in the first chapter or the second chapter. But whether this is intentional, I don't know. I suppose we'll have to find out. 
After this, the player finds himself running down a corridor with the words help written on the wall. Then we get to see the first look at Huggy Wuggy returning. But I don't think this is Huggy. I think what's going on here is you're looking at the Nightmare Huggy. I think in this scene you are hallucinating from the gas and you imagine Huggy returning to chase you and that's why his proportions are exaggerated and his face changed completely and the model just looks too clean to be down in this area for so long but perfect to be some type of hallucination and going with the broken pipes from earlier that leads into that quite wow. But it is so cool to see Huggy returning in some aspect. <laughs> then we get the last shot of the found footage VHS of the person falling over. And then we hear someone voicing over all that awaits you. And I think this is referring to the employees in the hazmat suits at the start. I think this is the kind of thing they would whisper to the children while they went into their deep sleep and then the big blockbuster moment he is revealed to us catnap standing larger than any of the toy we've seen so far with piercing eyes as he stares into our soul ready to take our life with those unfortunate combination of legs and body shape what i do find interesting is that if you look around catnap you can see another type of gas that seems to be leaking and distorting your view. Could this be one of the elements that have really tripped out Playcare and begun its descent into madness? Perhaps it was this leak of gas and as well as the normal uh, manufactured gas from Playtime Co was what created this whole outburst. But there is also something even more interesting. See, after hearing the end of the trailer, I notice when Catnap appears, the audio doesn't seem to sound right. And with a little trickery, I have found the hidden messages. They all seem to consist of a sentence and then someone screaming or crying in connection to it as a result of the words of the examiner, if you will. When the clip with Catnap is played in reverse, the messages can be heard. But I will have a follow-up video that comes out right after this one talking about it in detail so i will pop a link to that in the description so you can hear it because i go through over what it all means and you know exactly what you can hear i let you hear it first and let me know what you think and all that jazz now that all the video has been talked about there is one other interesting aspect of this trailer now of course the voiceovers are an important part of these trailers and of course they build uh tension and you know get you excited for everything that you're seeing but there are some things in particular that I want to talk about in relation to the voiceovers and that's there are two children in this trailer of course we can hear Elliot Ludwig and of course probably Harley I'm guessing but more importantly we hear the voice of a young what I'm going to assume is a boy and also of course Poppy you can tell those two voices are different because they are just in tone and pitch but the other child's voice we aren't familiar with and I want to tell you why I think the child we are listening to in the trailer warning us about he uses his, his, his church his hunting ground I think that is Theodore and I say that because I reckon we're going to be hearing some of the past recordings of Theodore's experience merging with Catnap and the experiences he had with Experiment 1006. I think we're going to hear from the counsellor as well as some of the damning reports from the office about Theodore's experience and how all that played out. And I think what we're hearing is exactly the snippets from those tapes. And I think... It's just describing how it's all going to go south and how it started. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you think I've missed anything or is there something you've noticed, let me know in the comments below as well. I love to hear your ideas and theories. But with that being said, have a lovely morning, day or night, wherever you are in the world. And remember, if you enjoy Poppy Playtime content, theories and all the works, make sure you hit subscribe and try to help me reach my 100k target this year. It'll be real greatly appreciated. But with that being said, have a lovely morning, day or night, wherever you are in the world. Stay safe and I'll see you all in the next Poppy Playtime theory video.